In this session, we're going to examine the light types available to you inside the Action 3D Compositor. It's worth noting that the lights have been designed to be in line with the 3D applications such as Autodesk Maya and Autodesk 3ds Max. This means that the lights can be set up in your favorite 3D application and recreated inside the Action 3D Compositor. This can be done through FBX or the Filmbox file format by exporting and importing the data between the various applications. Let's have a look at this simple scene which is a box room. This has been created with 2D images and we also have a 3D text geometry as well as a few spheres placed into the ground. The lighting is currently set to the standard ambient lighting. Now let's add a light into the scene. Go to the Action node bin and choose the Relighting tab. You can either double click the light node or drag the light node directly into the scene in a gestural fashion. The default behavior of the light is a standard omnidirectional light. This means that light bounces in all directions. Now double click on the light to bring up its object menu. In the object menu you can control the global settings of the light. For example, you can adjust the intensity of the light which reacts to the float point color space. This means you can have positive as well as negative light influencing each other in the scene. The spread allows you to focus the light into a cone shape for a spotlight effect. And the fall off allows you to soften the spotlight cone further. Aside from being able to change the color of the light, you have also got the different light types to be able to shade the composite in various ways. This is a point or spotlight. We can change this to a directional light and if I rotate the light's Y rotation value you can see that the arrow on the light is focusing the light in a particular direction. The ambient light floods the composite in a certain way with an ambient manner. You can now use this to help shade your composite in different ways. For example, if I switch back to the Action node bin and add another light into my scene you can see that the lighting values have been added together producing a bright result. Now if I double click on the ambient light to see its object menu, now pulling back the intensity into a negative range, you can see I've now created a negative light and this is now causing a really nice contrasting light effect. Let's go ahead and reset the intensity back to 100%. I will now select the other light and on the bottom right of the interface we can now delete it. The other options we have is the rectangular area light. So make sure the ambient light is selected and switch from the ambient to the rectangular area option. This allows the light to be distributed and focused in a rectangular area unlike a spotlight. The area size can also be lengthened and stretched to focus on a particular area. The same applies to the last lighting type called the elliptical area. This uses an ellipse to shine the light versus using the rectangular area. Another useful attribute to lighting is the decay value. This controls how the light fades as it shines further and further away from the original light. There are numerous decay options but I'm going to choose the linear decay settings. If I start increasing the slider you will see how the light disappears from the background first and as the decay value increases eventually the text begins to disappear as well from the light. Finally, we can switch to the profile menu which controls the distribution of the light over the curve. This allows you to further soften light edges by adjusting the tangents. We could also switch from the move mode to the add mode. We can then add keyframes into the curve and just look at the reaction to the light as we make the changes. This could be used for fun as well as creative type of effects. I will now reset the profile and switch back to the move mode. With the light still selected, ensure the selection option on the bottom right of the UI is set to selected. Press delete to delete the light. Now let's go ahead and press the escape hotkey on the keyboard which will bring up the schematic view. Select the light which is hidden and press the H hotkey on the keyboard to unhide the light. Now once again press the escape hotkey to return back to the result view. Here we can see that we have an elliptical light which has been placed above the 3D geometry. The other aspect of lighting is shadow casting. Shadows are cast from the lights therefore when we add shadows into the composite 
the shadow casting node will need to be connected to the light source. To do this, switch back to the schematic view by pressing the escape hotkey. Select the light in the schematic. Ensure that we're looking at the node bin menu and in the relighting tab you can see that there is an option called shadow cast. Now double click on the shadow cast node to add it into the scene. Double click the shadow cast node in the schematic to bring up the properties in the object menu at the bottom of the interface. If you press escape you'll be able to see the result view and the results of the shadow casting straight away. The 3D geometry is obviously casting a shadow onto the ground. But the one thing that's worth mentioning is that 2D as well as 3D objects can cast and receive shadows. Each object has got the option to choose whether it will receive a shadow, cast a shadow or do both which is actually the default behavior. Now if I was to select the light and increase its Z position you can see how the shadows will react according to the light position. You will also notice that the shadow is actually wrapping itself around the 3D sphere on the ground. Let's switch from the move option to the orbit option in the pop-up menu. Now if I click and drag we can look at the shadows from a different angle. There are three shadows available in the Action 3D Compositor. The current output and shadow type is set to 2.5D shadows which is the most common shadow casting for compositing applications. In the shadow menu you can adjust the transparency of the shadow, adjust the shadow softness as well as start bleeding the color from the objects in front of the light which will create translucent effects. The second shadow type is the 3D soft shadows. These are proper 3D cast shadows that truly take the 3D environment into account. Let's move the camera to be at a high angle from the 3D geometry. Now if I adjust the Z position of the light to be closer to the wall you will see that the geometry is actually self shadowing. This is not possible with 2.5D shadows. If we adjust the transparency setting as well as the shadow softness attributes you can see how we can fine tune the shadows to the 3D environment. There is also a decay value which can be enabled to have the shadows decay as they disperse further from the object. Finally we can switch to the 3D hard shadows. This is quite processor intensive but the results can be really good. Instead of shadow softness you have an option called the penumbra effect. When the penumbra slider is adjusted the closer parts of the shadow remain in focus but the parts of the shadow that are further away become blurred. This gives a very high degree of shadow refinement and there are further options which could also be tweaked. Depending on your hardware configuration 3D hard and soft shadows may not be available on your system. 2.5D shadows are supported along all the graphics cards. I urge you all to check your hardware certification documents to see the latest supported graphics hardware. I hope that the lighting system inside of Action has become a lot more brighter to you and all the functionality has been very useful.